Know God to know his will. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group, part two of the Spot Part Series. Excuses to avoid mission. And one of them is just having a false view, a misunderstanding of what God has actually called us to do. And I have found in my own experience is rather than trying to understand the blueprint, get to know the architect. Rather than trying to, to, to figure out what's, what's, what's in this dish and, and how I should put the dish together, just get to know the chef. This is what God gives to us and the invitation for relationship and not just rightness or righteousness or right doing in this sense, doing what God has told us to do the right way. When we read in John 17, verse three, Jesus himself said, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is a powerful promise. It's so full of information and inspiration, but we focus on this point. And that point being that to know God is what life actually is about. That's how we find our meaning. It's how we find our connection, our relationship to our source. Our genesis is in God. Knowing him, we not just discover ourselves, but we, we actually see what our God intends for his people or me, his person to do. God does not intend us to understand his will without understanding him. It's why he says in Psalm 910, and they that know thy name, the psalmist says, will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Those that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Because I know God and I know who he is, I'm, I'm able to put my trust not so much in his plan, but in his person, not just in his call, but in his character. When I know his character, the call becomes evident. The call becomes apparent because it's going to be consistent with who he is. I don't have to wonder whether or not if this is just even on a, on a, on a human plane. If I know that uh, somebody I'm looking up to who's this amazing, um, I don't know, somebody who's a great musical composer. And I know that that person comes from a certain place and certain background. I know just off the bat that there's certain elements and there's certain music styles and certain instruments they're probably not going to be interested in because of who they are in terms of their background. Same thing with God. By knowing his character, I know that they're automatically, there's some things that are just off the table. They're just not a part of the plan. But as I get to know him more, that's when those finer points of this plan become more apparent because I know his character. I know who he is, his background. But this is why I think when we see in 1 Chronicles 28, we see value in, in David's testimony and also his counsel to his son Solomon, knowing God versus knowing about God. It says, now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord and in the guidance or rather in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord, your God, that you may possess the good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. This was his word. This was his advice to all of Israel. But then to his son, thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father. And serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Knowing God is the way to knowing his plan. His plan is not something that's rolled up in the sheet of paper and it's in this plastic case with a lock on it. That's this secret idea that he has for you. Instead, it's an open book because it's an open heart and it's a revealed character through his treatment of you, through his giving of Jesus Christ and through his constant ministry of mercy and grace and love to us. This is how we then see in response to this, the life that he wants us to live. This plays out because we know his place in our lives. And I hope that we can see what David is saying to us is, is look, there are a lot of things that are gonna come your way. And there are a lot of things that you aren't going to know. But if you know God, he will be found of you. 
meaning he will find you. And if God has found you, it's his responsibility to lead you, not just home, not even just to heaven, but to his heart.